and gentlemen, please let us rise as we welcome His Excellency. Please join me in welcoming His Excellency, Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda. Your Excellency, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is my great privilege to welcome you to this second edition of the MWC Kigali 2023. My name is Angela Wamola, and I'm the head of Sub-Saharan Africa for the GSMA. Did you know that the first mobile phone call in Africa was made in 1987? Almost 40 years later, we have seen incredible growth across Africa, with half a billion people using mobile phone, and now we are poised to reach 50% by the end of 2030. But as we look into the future of the Africa we want, MWC Kigali is our platform to define the way forward faster for a more inclusive, connected, and prosperous Africa, leaving no one offline. Your Excellency, we thank you for your continued support and for your partnership in hosting this, the largest, most influential connectivity event in Africa. Thank you for joining us today. Mas Grenred GSMA, Director General, Doreen Bodan Martin, ITU Secretary General, Dr. Mani Abzaid, African Union Commissioner for Infrastructure and Energy, senior officials and business leaders, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'm pleased to join you for the opening ceremony of this Mobile World Congress. I welcome you all. We are very happy to host you. I commend MATS and GSMA for the important work you are doing to unlock the full potential of mobile connectivity. I thank you, I thank you for contributing to our continent's development. The pandemic has added to accelerating the transition to a new era of the technology-led development. Our young and talented entrepreneurs are driving this change, and we continue to support them. For example, financial technology is starting to make a big difference in everyday lives of our citizens. The potential of digital health technology to transform our health systems is also very clear. That means we have to address the gaps in the access and connectivity with a sense of urgency. Too many Africans remain offline. Today, Africa has the fastest growing mobile penetration rate globally. But we still have a long way to go. Yet, we already have the means to address the problems we are dealing with today. Regional integration, powered by faster and more reliable broadband, 
is a big part of it. The African Union and Smart Africa are our key institutions leading this, and Africa enjoys strong support from many partners. We can get more results faster by working together. I want to commend Airtel Rwanda for bringing the cost of 4G data within reach of nearly every Rwandan with a new initiative announced yesterday. And many thanks to philanthropic support from Reed Hastings, the co-founder and executive chairman of Netflix. Rwandans will be able to acquire a new smartphone for under $20 in order to take advantage of the offer. MTN Rwanda has already offered new competitive pricing to its customers as well. This is also very good news. We thank MTN. <laughs> Government's role was to maintain an enabling environment and a level playing field. This shows the power of collaboration among the private sector, government, and strategic philanthropy. At the same time, we must continue to prioritize digital skills and literacy. Globally, we are also seeing strong momentum to support Africa's digital transformation. The ITU's partner to connect digital coalition launched last year is a very good example. So far, over $32 billion in pledges have been mobilized and hard to reach communities will benefit the most. I thank ITU under the leadership of Doreen Borden Martin for spearheading this alliance. If there is one lesson from the pandemic, it is that in times of crisis, we have to look for the common denominator. Only then can we see the light at the end of the tunnel and build the future we all deserve. Once again, I thank you all for coming to Kigali to attend the Mobile World Congress, which we are very happy to host for the second time. You are most welcome and wish you all a productive meeting, and I thank you for your kind attention. It is now my honor to, in rise to, to invite to the stage the Minister for ICT and Innovation in Rwanda, Honorable Paula Ingaviri. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Honorable Ministers and Cabinet Members, Director General of GSMA, Secretary General of ITU, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
Good morning. I'm pleased to welcome you back to Rwanda for the second edition of the Mobile World Congress 2023. Allow me to extend our gratitude to Your Excellency for joining us again for the Mobile World Congress. Your presence here is a strong demonstration of your continued championship of technology and innovation-led development. Your Excellency, allow me to also recognize eight visiting ministers from CAR, Central African Republic, Djibouti, Egypt, Gabo, Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, and Zambia. Last October, MWC was, the, was held for the first time in Africa, and we witnessed deep, deep engagement and a clear rallying call on the role of technology as a catalyst for development. Whether it's towards fostering innovation, accelerating entrepreneurship, creating jobs, as well as accelerating learning and education and health outcomes. And with that, meaningful partnerships were formed. This year's MWC is poised to be an exciting continuation as we unpack this year's pertinent theme, Unleashing Tomorrow's Technology, today over the next couple of days. Every day, new challenges test our humanity, just as much as our need to understand and adopt technology. New products and new services emerge from these challenges to empower our people. This year's theme provides an opportunity to learn more about technology solutions available today and on the horizon that can ensure no African is left behind by being connected and finding utility in the greater access to the internet. Your Excellency, we've gathered here today with over 2,500 participants from all over the continent brought together with the common ambition of ensuring that Africa is truly a present player in harnessing the latest technologies as we address our pressing challenges, but also as we build sustainably, resiliently, and inclusive futures. Today, we stand at the brink of technological innovations that are no doubt fundamentally reshaping our world and the future. 5G technologies, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, big data, and other emerging technologies hold the power to transform lives. Historically, Africa has had challenges, has faced challenges in technological adoption, but this time, we must be resolute in overcoming the barriers. At the end of these three days, I hope we'll have gained immense insights on how to address emerging challenges, swiftly using future technologies, and innovating in areas such as fintech, agritech, edtech, and health tech, among others. In Rwanda, we remain committed to driving policies that foster a conducive and enabling environment for innovation and investment in present and future technologies in collaboration with public and private partners. I invite you to engage in insightful discussions, exchange innovative ideas, and forge partnerships that will truly unleash tomorrow's technology today. But while you do that, do take some time to enjoy the hospitality and the culture that Rwanda has to offer. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Mats Granard, Director General of the GSMA. Thank you, President Kagame, for your support and for hosting us in this beautiful Rwanda. Over the years, Rwanda has emerged as a true technolo technological leader uh, within Africa, embracing the power of digital transformation to advance its services and improve the lives of citizens across the country. Uh, serving as an example to many countries across the continent. Yes, Rwanda is quickly becoming one of Africa's major innovation hotspots. In fact, according to the World Economic Forum, it is number four in Africa and is well on its way of becoming number one. At the core of this, transforma at, at, at the core of this transformation lies your leadership and vision, President Kagame as well as the power of mobile technology. 
Over the past 20 years, uh, your forward-looking digital policies have driven Rwanda's economic transformation. And across the country, mobile has become a catalyst for change, enabling access to education, healthcare, uh, financial services, and opportunities for businesses to grow and innovate. Today, Rwanda's mobile operators cover almost 99% of the country, enabling over 11 million connections, with over 85% of these now based on mobile broadband technologies. And the number keeps growing. Of course, there is still much work to be done in Rwanda and across the continent to make sure that everyone everywhere has access to mobile internet and the transformational benefits of mobile internet. But I know the government of, Rwa of Rwanda is committed to achieving these goals for their citizens. Take, for example, the affordability of smartphones, one of the key barriers to addressing the usage gap. Here in, here in Rwanda, tax exemptions for smartphones and making mobile more affordable for all citizens. Uh, uh, and with partnerships like the one between MTN Rwanda and the Bank of Kigali, enabling smartphone financing options, it is only a matter of time before everyone in Rwanda is connected. At the continent, uh, as the continent works towards Agenda 2063, 63, the Africa we want, Rwanda is a fantastic example of what can be achieved through strategic investments in technology, in technolo in technology and innovation.